welcome to another edition of the Coco and Dolls podcast. Tis the season for streaming. I'm not Coco. And I'm not Dolls. And what we do here at Coco and Dolls Incorporated is we stream things on Netflix, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus, Disney Plus, HBO Max, HBO Max, and Apple TV Plus. And Apple TV Plus. We do all that. And we tell you whether you should watch them or not. We give you our witty, funny reviews. Don't we, Coco? I think I know what you're going to say about tonight's review. So what are we going to be talking about in this particular episode of the podcast, Coco? Speaking of Apple TV+. Plus, Oh, and we just were. We are reviewing Spirited, the brand new two-hour and seven-minute movie starring Will Ferrell and Ryan Reynolds. It's a takeoff of A Christmas Carol. Mm Mm-hmm. So, Will Ferrell plays the ghost of Christmas present. It's kind of told from the ghost's perspective. So, every year right after Christmas, when they redeem a person or not, they find their subject for the following year's haunting. They spend the entire year figuring out which memories they should use on that person to get that person to be a better person in Mm -hmm. the end. And this year's subject is Ryan Reynolds, who plays Clint Briggs. I guess he's like a PR executive. He really kind of does some dirty, underhanded stuff. He sows the seeds of misinformation online. Oh, uh, for that doesn't happen, does it? No. For his clients' nefarious purposes. Um, and most of the movie is actually Ryan Reynolds and Will Ferrell interacting in the dream sequence. And then thereafter, uh, where Will Ferrell's trying to get Ryan Reynolds to be a better person. This mm-hmm. was written, directed, and produced by someone named Sean Anders, Mm -hmm. who is the brother of Andrea Anders, who is an actress of some renown, who also plays Ryan Reynolds' sister, who, spoiler alert, uh, dies of cancer in the movie and tries to leave him her daughter because she's a single mom. Also, spoiler alert, he turns her down. Because he's like the bad guy. And we need to redeem all bad guys in the world. So do you have anything to add to the summary, Dalton? Oh, and by the way... It's a musical. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> see, this is something... When we when we were going to watch this, Coco says, hey, don't forget about the Ryan Reynolds, Will Ferrell thing. And I was like, oh, yeah, right. And I didn't know it was a musical. I, I wasn't really paying attention. And all of a sudden, they start breaking out into song very early on in the movie. Yeah. And I was like... Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Is this a musical? <laughs> so right off the top, listener, be be forewarned. This is a musical. Now, however, I've the crack research team got me some crack research, and not to be confused with the Lindsay Lohan review we just did a couple episodes ago. Just FYI. <laughs> no, let's not carry on with that uh, same thing. But so the it is a musical, yes, and I was not prepared for it being a musical. Yeah, me neither. But me the musical uh, collaboration. Uh, behind the scenes by Benji Pasek and Justin Paul, just for your edification, listener, are the the brain uh, trust behind the music in La La Land, oh. The Greatest Showman, Dear Evan Hansen, and Lyle Lyle Crocodile. I've never heard of that final one. The, that was 2022 animated uh, dealio. It, I figured it was probably animated with a name like Lyle Lyle Crocodile. Well, you could actually just call me that around the house if you want to. That's long. <laughs> That's what she said. Uh, that's, that's the whole idea. Uh, so, um, so the, the, you know, the music is not exactly like it's not like Will Ferrell and Ryan Reynolds writing songs down on a on a napkin and then singing them later. Like these are legit songs. However, it's a musical, so just be forewarned. Um, I don't. Other than the musical part of it, I didn't really have anything to add. I think you nailed the summary as usual, as always, Coco. You're trying to keep me to continue doing the summaries because you don't <laughs> like doing them. I, well, no, I do. I don't mind doing the summaries, but I, every time I do them, you look at me like you missed 14 things that I was going to say, <laughs> and then you add them later on in the podcast as we go along. It's like, well, you forgot to mention that it's on Netflix. <laughs> like it's usually something really important that I've forgotten. Um, so. What did you think, Coco? Do you want to... No, I just, no I, I threw it to you so you could give us your opinion because I know you have lots of opinions on this. All right. Well, the musical part was, was just blew me away, first of all. And I wasn't sure whether I liked it or not. 
The second part, uh, I don't know if this movie is trying to be campy or trying to be seasonal or trying to be a little bit of everything. Um, but there are moments that really don't work at all. And then there are moments that actually are pretty funny and pretty entertaining. So it's a very uneven kind of presentation as far as I'm concerned. Um, Ryan Reynolds and Will Ferrell are great. Uh, the other thing that I want to offer is that the bloopers in this movie, like they missed a golden opportunity at the end of the movie to have a bunch of bloopers with the, these two guys must've been killing themselves, laughing, breaking each other up, breaking up the cast, everything like that. Cause they're known jokesters. Yeah. How much of this movie was actually ad-libbed? Right. You got to think that a lot of it was. Um, and the third thing that I wanted to mention, the more crack research, uh, they were each paid $20 million for this movie. Wow. Apple throwing around my money every time I buy a new iPhone. Like right. it's just going straight to Will Ferrell. <laughs> exactly. Right into his pocket. <laughs> right. So uh, I didn't, I don't, I didn't notice that or I didn't know that until after we watched the movie. And uh, so I think I would have had different expectations. However, the singing and dancing, it was fine, but it just, certain times it worked. And other times it was just like, that's Will Ferrell singing and dancing. <laughs> and it's not Saturday Night Live skit. So I don't know. That's that's where I stop. I have more to offer. But I wanted to throw it back to you, not Dalton, and see what you thought. Yeah, I agree on, I, I was also unaware that it was a musical. So at they went really heavy with the musical numbers at the very beginning of the mm-hmm. movie. Mm-hmm. And after 20 minutes, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get through this because <laughs> yeah. I am not a musical person yeah. at all. Yeah. Um, they did lay off the musical numbers later in the movie. Mm-hmm. There were still quite a few. Mm-hmm. Some of them I didn't mind. Some of them, yeah, didn't add anything really. Um, but once we got past the first 20 minutes and it wasn't every single word of dialogue was sung, I was okay with it. Um, well, even the one character who's like the, the boss man was like, we don't have to, we don't have to sing right. a song right now. We don't <laughs> right. have to, like they, they, they <laughs> nodded the at chorus. it. They were kind <laughs> of, yeah, they were kind of winking at it. It was like, okay, this doesn't have to be a song. And it's like, all right, I guess it has to be a song. So there was a little bit of acknowledgement in that. I thought that was interesting that they kind of poked fun at it because, I had no awareness that this was a musical, so I bet you a lot of people are going into this like, oh, Will Ferrell and Ryan Reynolds are going to be telling jokes about Christmas all day long. It's like, no, actually, they're singing and dancing. And I thought they did have very good chemistry. Oh, I yeah. I yeah. really enjoyed uh, their interplay, for lack of a better way of putting it. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought they had great chemistry. Uh, yeah. I, there were definitely some extremely solid laughs. At one point, Will Ferrell thinks that somebody at a Christmas party dressed up like Elf, Buddy the Elf, he's like, you look ridiculous. And it's, <laughs> you look it, so stupid. It's, it was really, really funny. Yeah. So I I enjoyed it. Um, yeah, I wasn't uh, surprised when the fate that befell Ryan Reynolds' character at the end happened because that's kind of what has to happen for that character to be redeemed. Mm. Um you know, like there was a, you know, huge musical number and the whole time during that number, I'm like, okay, but what happened? Like, mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> You're on the edge of your seat. There's going to be a come down because th- there's no way that this is going to be a happy ending, you know. And that was something that I did kind of have a problem with because, um, you know. So, yeah. So the mm-hmm. whole movie is Ryan Reynolds' character is unredeemable. Like, mm-hmm. Will Ferrell's boss in the afterlife is just like, no, don't waste your time on this guy. He's unredeemable. And Will Ferrell makes it his mission to redeem Ryan Reynolds. And then Ryan Reynolds is finally redeemed, but nobody knows that except for the other people in the afterlife, Mm -hmm. like the other ghosts. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, then was he really redeemed? Mm. Because like, Nobody knows it, you know, Mm -hmm. like nobody, nobody knows the inner turmoil that he was going through. Well, nobody, no, I mean, they could see it, but then nobody, you know, he didn't stick around for them to see that he was redeemed. Mm -hmm. Like he didn't stick around for them to see like, okay, instead of digging up oppo research, you know, on political candidates, like now he's going to raise funds for animal shelters, you right, know? Right, right. Um, so I was like, you know, even though he's doing good where he's at in the end, the people he left behind don't know that he's doing mm-hmm, good. Mm-hmm. So was he... But they didn't know that he was unredeemable either. 
That's true. Um, I did. So Octavia Spencer plays his assistant mm-hmm. slash executive vice president at his PR firm, who's having like a crisis of conscience because she doesn't want to keep doing bad stuff. Dirty deeds. And she and Will Ferrell kind of fall in love with each other. And she's charming in everything she does. Like she's always, you know, she's always just such a delight to watch. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I can see why Will Ferrell fell in love with her it was kind of funny though because he wants to come back to life and have the family that he never had before he died and i'm like you and octavia spencer are not having kids the old-fashioned way like you're both (laughs) you're both way too long in the tooth for that like you're adopting those kids wow so um that's that's a harsh noodle right there i'm just saying like i mean she's she's you know radiant but she's she's great yeah she was great in that yeah so that's what, what else um so Will Ferrell playing a singing buffoon is kind of like the last time we saw him, which was uh, the Euro Eurovision song Euro, contest. Eurovision song with contest with Rachel McAdams. Yes, which was actually the last time we reviewed something he was in, I believe, and it was the last time, the first time in a long time that we saw something that we liked him in that was actually funny and good. He must like working with Canadians between Rachel McAdams and Ryan Reynolds. Oh, geez, why wouldn't you? <laughs> They're happy-go-lucky. They're always singing. That, see, that's that was like filmed in Canada probably, and it was just an everyday occasion. You know, they were, Everybody was singing and dancing and going to Hudson Bay and getting their their jackets. and Watching Hudson and Rex. <laughs> Hudson and Bay and Rex. Yes. Yeah. Going to Timmy's and standing in line. Everybody's like, da, 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 da. Going to get a double, double. And some Tim Beebs. Tim Beebs. Look at you. You're going to make a good Canadian. I do have a lot of Canadian in me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... <laughs> Wow, Dalt's is speechless. Wow. <laughs> you could see the red on my face, <laughs> listener. <laughs> but uh, so let's go right to the crux of the matter. Is this something that people should watch, Coco? Is this something that you should invest your time in? I would say yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, oh, yeah? it, it is 207, but mm-hmm. it didn't seem like 207. No, it didn't. Like, it seemed like it was probably about an hour and a half. Yeah. Um, if you don't like musicals, don't watch it. I mean, that's, well, that's, that's the major caveat. That's it. Um, it's very much a musical. Yeah. If you don't mind musicals or if you love them, this is going to be right up your alley. Like I said, if if you're on the fence after the first 20 minutes, it gets more tolerable. Um, yeah. It's it's an engrossing story. It's entertaining. There's some really good laughs. I'd- so let's let's talk to listener. If listener's weighing the Lindsay Lohan Christmas thing. Definitely this. What was it called well, again? Uh, Falling for Christmas. Falling for Christmas well, or Spirited. It depends on what your jam is. And like, it also you... depends on who's sitting there list- watching it with you. If it's like your grandmother or if it's your kids. You right. Know, one or the other. Like if you want unintentional laughs, mm-hmm. go for Lindsay Lohan. <laughs> if you want intentional funniness, this is your jam. Knowing that there is musical acts going on throughout. <laughs> That's like your big hang up. Like your <laughs> uh, no, I see I like musicals more than you do. Actually I like musicals and you don't, right? Like so Yeah, you did watch The Greatest Showman. And, and, I, and I, I was just like, ooh, I'm gonna do some working from home. La La Land is one of my favorite movies. That was that was made in the last ten years probably. Yeah, that was surprisingly good. It was really good. And I like Ryan Gosling as everybody on the podcast knows. Speaking of Canadians. Speaking of uh, charming, good looking Canadians um so i like musicals so don't get me wrong there and the greatest showman i actually got a big kick out of it um it was pretty good speaking of zach efron which if you haven't listened to our <laughs> review of the second season of down to earth with zach efron please go back one episode in your podcast feed and listen to that look at you with all the hidden seeds here i'm totally like you're cross promoting mar- you're marketing right now i'm worth every penny of what i get paid <laughs> i'd say more i'd say twice as much as you're getting paid <laughs> But I would say, having said all that about musicals, uh, just be aware that this is a musical. And the music is not uh, on that level, even though I described the chops that the people who brought it to us have. Um, it's not on that level. I mean, the, the the one song about Good Afternoon was kind of funny. <laughs> and then it seeds a joke for later on in the movie, which is which is good. So it has a little bit of a plot push to it. Um but the songs, I didn't really, it wasn't tapping my toes. Like, it wasn't like when I was watching Frozen and I was like, yeah, I, this is going to be a big hit. Like, wow, you know what I mean? Or it wasn't like uh, La La Land where, uh, you know, uh, Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone are, are doing that dance and they're and they're, the song goes through the whole movie. Um, it's, there's nothing like that. There's nothing that's 
an essential part of the movie. So, but it's a Christmas movie. It's a holiday movie. So, you know, you know what you're getting. Mm -hmm. And you could watch it and then you could move on and watch something else. And it won't stick with you very long, probably. (laughs) So out of 87 degrees of pie, (laughs) what? (laughs) I give it a (laughs) 3.14. Yes. (laughs) Um. I, uh, out of 10, I give it a seven, you know, um, but I would say whether it's the watch or don't watch grade, I would say lean toward watching, but if it's January, don't watch it. Yeah. Or February or like, you know, anytime after December 25th. Yeah. It's, it's definitely a, a seasonal movie. It's like those sure. Christmas movies get away with so much, right? Like they're so terrible sometimes, but it brings you like right into the spirit of things and you, everybody's like looking for a good heartwarming story. And so you kind of have a suspension of disbelief and all that. sort. it's like, you know, of course a fat guy comes down the chimney. What else? You know, I mean, he brings you presents and he doesn't take any of your silverware and then he goes back up. Like, of course that makes sense. But then, you know, then you get into January and February and it's like the reality of, of real life hits you back again. So if you're willing to watch a Christmas movie or if you watch Christmas movies in July, that's that's your thing. Then you should We're going to see this on the Hallmark Channel when they do Christmas in July. Like, right. I mean, maybe. Yeah, why not? Well, so that was my long-winded way of saying it's sort of a recommendation to watch. It depends on what you like. What uh, What letter did you give it? I'd give it a B. A B? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I enjoyed it. You enjoyed it more than I thought you did. Did you think that I didn't enjoy it as much? Yeah, definitely. You you were definitely looking at your phone quite a bit. You say that all the time. I'm usually uh, doing crack research. Though. <laughs> I'm looking up where it was filmed and <laughs> how tall the actor is and stuff like that. So I'd also give it a watch. But yeah, definitely, like Dalt said, make sure it's between Halloween and New Year's. Don't, you know... It, you know, if why, why watch it in August? You if know? you're listening to the podcast in June, right. you're like, spirited, should I watch that? Is it is it about... It's about Jack Daniels. Is it about like a... Like Distillery. A, like a glee club kind of thing? <laughs> oh, spirited, yes. Very nice. Very nicely done. Um, so anything else to add, Coco, before we wrap up this uh, special holiday edition of the podcast? I don't know. It's just, nah. it's just another podcast, actually. Yeah. No, I got, I got nothing. All right. I got, I got lots for you, though. Oh, yeah. (laughs) So, for another episode of the podcast. Speaking of (laughs) Timbits. I'm not Dolph. And I'm not Coco. (laughs) 